Welcome to part 18 of Modeling Fundamentals. In this section we have a look at collision detection. Collision detection is a critical part of our checking system but it can also be used as a tool to help us create compound components and difficult to make parts. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to establish what is going to potentially give us a false collision. So an example would be these handrails here where the rail passes through the stanchion. Now the stanchion hasn't been drilled for the rail although in the real world that would be drilled. All right? so, so it's a false collision. Not to be confused with other areas that do need checking like these corners and so forth. So other false collisions that we've got to consider is things like pearl and laps here. You know, a pearl and lap would be a false collision. Other things like um, rod bracing, I, I know this is angle, but rod bracing would deflect where it passes over each other. So we're going to navigate to ProSteel T4, which is our collision detection. Now we've got a few settings here. Our minimum volume here is currently set to 30. That is the collision uh, value between two different objects before it'll uh, cause a collision. Display scaling will allow us to zoom in and out of objects and our actual collision is allows us to scroll backwards and forwards zooming in. Now um, if we want to check for collisions we will hit this button. If we want to check just for bolts we'd hit this button. It creates a collision body, a solid body. This button here clears them all out for us when we're done. It's very important we do this when we're finished. These two here are what we use to scroll around between our collisions okay and it's linked to that display scaling. Finally use mounting space allows us to see whether we can actually get tools in and get the bolt in to a specific area. I have this turned off because I am pretty careful when I put my collisions in to begin with. So let's have a quick look at this handrail we were talking about before because I know it collides just to show you what it's like. Okay, so I have one of two collisions here. Okay, and you can see I've got a magenta body in there. Now I'm just going to take a copy of this here and drag it out for you, just so you can have a look. You can see it's a solid body. All right, that that Pro Steel. Now this works in pretty handy for us because we can snap to it and everything, and it'll help us. But it's very important we remove this when we're done to get rid of all those magenta bodies. Otherwise, they could position when we go through steel positioning. Very important you remove them, okay, that there's no magenta markers left. So let's turn off some of these objects that are known but false collision. It's sort of up to you as the user to decide, do I get rid of the staunch in here? Do I get rid of the actual handrails? What do I turn off and hide so that I, I get the best look? Personally, I like leaving the staunchons because the staunchons regularly hit the grating where the actual handrail, if I spin this around, really the only thing that I can see that handrail coming close to is maybe that brace here. Okay, and I mean before I turn anything off I could probably even do a bit of a collision to check. I mean most of the time you can just pivot it around like this and, and see whether you have a collision. But I mean if you're not quite sure, just do a quick check, right? None of none, which is perfect which means now I'm safe to turn those handrails off or, or hide them okay, um, using the Pro Steel hide function and I can go and check other things. So I can come up here to hide and I can run around and I can turn all these handrail, thing, you know, handrail um, components off that I don't really want to muck around with because I, I know there's no collision there so I'm not going to worry about it. All right, so what I'll do is I'll fast forward through this bit so that you um, don't have to watch me do all this. I'm just going to take this opportunity to pause while I'm hiding stuff. I just want to show you a little anomaly here that S8 has got, and that is the sphere here. There's a sphere inside a sphere. The, there's a sort of a black outline that you can make out here if I can drag it sort of over. That, that's it there. It's used for the creation of these ball staunchions. Now, strangely, if you drag it, it disappears, but I can delete it and it will leave the actual handrail sphere behind. So, I just want to show you how to um, get rid of these. They're used for the creation of the handrail, so they're not going to go away. Um, 
but I just, I've got two ways of getting rid of these. They're on PS dim level, okay, which means if I isolate PS dim level by, by just turning off handrail, you can see they're all there and I can delete them. Another way to get rid of them, because I know they're on PS dim, okay, is, and the way to check that, just real quickly, is come up to the element information and you can see PS dim, all right is if I come to my element selection here and I scroll down till I find PS dim, I've just gone a bit too far. If I isolate that or, or select that, you can see everything on that level has been selected. So it's just come down here, select PS dim, and then hit the delete button and they're all gone. Okay, so there's a couple of different ways. Once your handrail is completed, let's get rid of those, okay? It's just, um, I've asked for them to remove it in newer versions or, 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 you know, versions newer than S8, but in S8, which is when this has been created, this, um, th those, those balls will exist. Okay, so now that we've got rid of everything that we want to get rid of, we'll run the collision detection again. So we shouldn't have too many false negatives here, or false collisions. There's nothing wrong with false collisions. It just takes a lot longer for it to, or for us to search through the the important collisions, the true collisions. So, you know, if we can remove as many as possible first before we start, it just makes our job a lot easier. Now, you can also break your job down into sections. There's no need to do all of it in one hit. I, I could do this job in three separate passes, overlapping each other, if I had a really big job, if you wanted to. All right. So there we go, I have one of 13, and if we zoom in, you can see what it does is it colors the collision gray as well. And if I use the scroll bars, you can see that we've got this magenta collision here. Now that's really important, we've got a handrail that runs into our grading. Okay, it's very easy to miss unless you let the program do the work for you. And this is why I mean, you know, this is why it's important to um, ensure that you do these collision detections. So you can just, just make out there. So using our polycut method, we would polycut around this base plate to clear, you know, 20 mil clear around the grating. Okay. So there's a few there the same. So if we scroll through, you can see it will count down the actual collision number and it will show us all the collisions we miss. A lot of them are grading. It's really important to check your handrail and grading or leave those guys on. You can see I've got some uh, bolts over here, residual bolts. Okay, this guy here is important. Look, I hit a stiffener with a bolt. Okay, so very, very important with your um, collision detection that you leave as much on as you can and you ensure that every job you do, you make sure you run collision detection, please. So once we go through the process of hiding all the things we don't want a collision check, we do our collision checks, we fix up the areas that collide that, that need fixing, and we clear our collision bodies out, we need to bring our objects back. ProSteel Regen brings everything back, okay? So that finishes our modeling errors. What if we want to help us assist with our modeling? Well, let's have a go at something a bit harder. What I've got here is a basic chute with a flange on it. You can see that the plate here interferes with the flange. Now, it's important the IP point I want right on that corner there. But what it means is I need to shorten, I need to work out where to shorten this plate up. So this procedure is, is pretty simple. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go uh, hide everything except just these two objects here, just, just to make it simple for this example. I'm going to come up to my collision and I'm going to run a collision on the plate and the flange. And you can see I've got a little triangular collision body there where the two intersect. So if I get rid of this just to help you sort of see it a little bit easier, we'll go object view centered and we'll have a look at our plate looking straight down the side. Okay, so what we're dealing with here is that line right there is 
the start of my collision where the side plate hits the flange. And what I want to do is I want to come up to modify and we're going to trim to a line. We're going to select our plate. We don't have a line so I'm going to go by point and use my collision body as something to snap to. So I'm just going to draw a point, two points, left to right. And all it's going to leave, it's just cut that off and all it's going to leave is my collision body left if I zoom in there. So that magenta area is the collision body where the plate hit the flange and you can see the cut now is square to my side plate because I use that collision body as a template to cut to. Really cool, isn't it? And this is our end result. I'll just regenerate everything and you can see now my side plate comes down and just till it kisses the flange, leaving a well gap there through to the intersection point. Don't forget to clear the intersecting body out all the time. So that's it for collision detection. A very, very handy tool, not only for finding mistakes, but also to assist us with our modelling.